Sometimes there are two restrictions on a value, and they both have to be met. For example, suppose that a club allows children who are at least three and under 18 to join. Then if A represents the age of a child, then the child can join the club if a is greater than or equal to 3, and A is less than 18. And that's how we would express this restriction. We write two inequalities with the word and between them. This is called a compound inequality. It's an inequality that is two inequalities put together. In this case, the two inequalities are put together with the word and. The word and means both inequalities must be true, just like it does in everyday English. Now suppose I wanted to sketch this inequality on the number line. I would draw a number line that shows the numbers 3 and 18. Notice that in labeling this number line, I'm counting by threes because I don't want to write all the numbers from 3 up to 18. The first thing I'm going to do is sketch each of these inequalities separately. So 3 and everything to the right. This is a is greater than or equal to 3. 18 with an empty dot and everything to the left. That's A is less than 18. And now the places where both are true are the places where they overlap. So the overlap starts with a closed dot at 3, ends with an open dot at 18, and includes all of the points in between there. And that's all we need to do in order to graph an AND inequality. Graphing the inequality is sometimes going to be useful because this is not the only situation we can get with an AND inequality. Let's say we had an AND inequality that looks like this. Let's say we want to look at all of the numbers that are at the same time greater than 2 and greater than negative 3. I'm not going to graph this in detail because the only numbers that we're really interested in here are negative 3 and then later on 2. Right, all the numbers in between there aren't really interesting to us as far as this inequality is concerned. So x is greater than 2. That starts at 2 and continues on to the right. x is greater than negative 3. That starts at negative 3 and continues on to the right. These overlap only to the right of 2. So actually it turns out, once we look at the graph, that x is greater than 2 and x is greater than negative 3 really just means the same thing as x is greater than 2. That is, if we already know that x is greater than 2, telling us that it's also greater than negative 3 doesn't give us any additional information. If part of a compound inequality doesn't give us any additional information, we can just forget about that part. We can leave it out. We can stop writing it. One other thing that we see with these AND inequalities, it's a little bit weird, but let me show you. We might end up with an inequality that says x is less than 5 and x is greater than or equal to 7.
Again, I'm just marking the numbers 5 and 7 on my number line because I'm not interested in any other numbers. So x is less than 5. x is greater than or equal to 7. Where do these overlap? Well, they don't. So if I want to say what are all the points where they overlap, there aren't any. This compound inequality has no solution. That makes sense, right? There aren't any numbers that are at the same time smaller than 5 and also at least as big as 7. Everything that's smaller than 5 is also smaller than 7. So those are the possibilities, right? Our arrows can go in opposite directions and overlap in the middle. They can both go to the right and overlap at the right end. They can both go to the left and overlap at the left end. Or they can go in opposite directions and not overlap at all. In this situation, we need both inequalities. In these two situations, we need only the more restrictive inequality, only the one that gives the shorter ray. And in this situation, we have no solution, because there are not any numbers where both inequalities are true.